Like many aspects of getting the peak performance out of your car, tire pressures can be a really complex subject. The methods you use to both record and adjust and track your tire pressures will depend on the type of racing you're doing and the equipment you've got access to. Here I'm just going to go through a few basics to help you do a better job of getting your tire pressures right while you're on track. The vertical load on the tire, the internal construction and the tire pressure are things that are pretty dominant when it comes to determining the surface pressure distribution on the tire. This is something that's quite often referred to as the contact patch and how that pressure is distributed throughout the contact patch has a really big impact on how the tire is working when you're on track. Once the tire pressures have been set in the pit lane, that's what you're stuck with until the next time you return to the pits. They're generally not adjustable while you're on track. The tire pressures are also continuously changing throughout your stint and throughout the lap. If you leave the pit lane with cold tires, as they warm up, the pressures will all come up, and that means as you continue to run lap after lap, the pressures will be changing and evolving as you go through your stint. The other thing to consider is the tire pressures are continuously changing as you move through each part of the circuit. So depending on the energy input from one corner to another, you will find that the pressures will vary at different parts of the circuit. This is one of the things that makes tire pressures such a challenging part of car setup. This also means tire pressures are a massive compromise. Just because it's right in one part of the track, doesn't mean it's going to be right for the rest of it. So you do always have to make a compromise on getting the optimum tyre pressure over a single lap. The most dominant parameter that controls tyre pressure is the internal air temperature inside the tyre. There are a couple of different sources of temperature that changes the internal temperature of the tyre. One of them is the hysteresis of the tyre as it works. That simply means as the rubber deflects and moves as the car moves around the track, it naturally generates heat which tends to warm the tyre and therefore the air inside the tyre. Another one is the brakes. The brakes give off a lot of heat and this heat naturally results in the tyre pressures rising inside the car at the same time. The age of the tyre, type of tyre construction and compound and the tread depth also have a big impact on how the tyre pressures evolve. The cold pressure is the pressure of the tyre before it's been run on the car. That means the tyre and the rim will be at ambient temperature. You can generally only check and set the cold pressures before the tyre has been run on the car that day or if it's been sitting around for at least a few hours to equilibrate to the ambient temperature. A hot pressure tyre target is what you're generally most interested in when it comes to maximising the performance from your tyre pressures. Each combination of tyre and car and track will have an optimum hot pressure you'll be going for. The hot pressure recommendation is best to come from either the tyre supplier or the tyre manufacturer. Once you've been given a hot pressure target from the tyre supplier or manufacturer, this is when you need to go to the track and test across that window to see what works best for your car at that track. If you're going to get advice from a tyre supplier or manufacturer, they'll have a few questions for you. This will generally be what type of racing you're doing, what type of car are you using, and from there they'll be able to give you a pretty good pressure range that you should be aiming for. If your tyre supplier or manufacturer can't give you a recommendation for your target hot pressure, that's probably a pretty good indication it's time to look for a new supplier or manufacturer. This is pretty basic information that you really should be getting if you're investing money in their tyres. It's worth remembering that tyre pressure not only affects performance, it's also a safety issue. It's quite easy to damage a tyre by running really low pressures and damaging the construction. Your tyre pressures are constantly evolving as you move throughout a lap and a stint. It's worth remembering that if you're doing many consecutive laps, particularly when you're starting from a cold tyre, the tyre pressure will be constantly evolving as you move through a stint. There will be a point where the tyre pressure reaches an equilibrium where it stays relatively stable as long as it's being driven in the same way consistently, but this can be as many as 20-30 laps depending on the application and the type of tyre. Because your hot tyre pressures are constantly moving throughout your stint, this means that you need to set your cold pressures based on whether you're doing a short run, like a qualifying run, or a long race run. For a qualifying run you would typically start with a lot higher cold pressure. That means you'll reach your target hot pressure in a lot fewer laps than you would during a race run. By the same token you would typically set your race pressures a fair bit lower with the cold pressures. That's just to allow for doing many consecutive laps so that you don't blow way over your hot target early into your stint. The simplest way to get your cold pressures from your hot pressures is to run the car on track. Ideally you want to be bleeding down rather than having to boost the pressures when the car's in the pit lane. This means sending the car out on track and every time it comes back to the pit lane, bleeding the hot pressures down to your hot pressure target. For this method to work, you need to be running approximately the same number of laps on track as you're setting the tyre pressures for. This means if you're trying to find your qualifying cold pressures, you would go out and run a similar number of laps than you expect to run in your qualifying session, come in, bleed the tyres down to target, and that's going to get you pretty close with your qualifying pressures. In a similar way, if you're doing 
your race pressures, you would head out and do close to a full race run, come in, bleed the tyres down to target, and that means you're pretty close to your hot pressure target. Once you're happy with your hot pressures that you've got with the car in the pit lane after running hard on track, in order to find the cold pressures, you need to take them off the car and let them cool. You need to let them cool until the wheels and tyres have reached ambient temperature. Obviously each application is going to be a bit different, but you really want to leave the wheels and tyres out of direct sunlight for at least two to three hours so they reach ambient temperature. The reason we're letting the wheels and tyres get to an ambient temperature is because what we're actually interested in is the temperature of the air inside the tyre. Without specialist equipment it's pretty difficult to actually measure the temperature of the air inside the tyre. So the idea is if you let them sit and equilibrate with the ambient temperature, if you measure the rim or tyre temperature, it's a pretty good approximation for the temperature of the air inside the tyre. This is also why you want to make sure you leave them out of direct sunlight. If you leave them in the shade, it allows everything to cool down faster and it means that you can be more sure that the air inside the tyre is going to be the same as the temperature you measure on the outside. Now that the tyre is at equilibrium, you can go around and measure the pressure of each of your four tyres from that set and record the temperature that they were when you took those pressures. This is now your cold pressure reference. And next time you come back to this track or the next time you run when it comes time to set the cold pressures these are your reference that you can use the reason this is a reference is because you know the hot pressures were right on track and now that they've cooled this is a reference you can use next time you set your cold pressures it's important to realize that each different circuit you go to will require a different cold pressure for a different hot target that's because each circuit has a different energy input into the tire some tracks will require a relatively small pressure split from one side of the car to the other others will need a lot larger cold pressure split in order to achieve square hot targets all the way around one of the things you've got to remember is that the air temperature inside the tire is the most dominant thing that controls the tire pressure that means if the temperature of the tire is different from the temperature the tires were at when you got your reference pressures you need to account for that that's because as the temperature of the tire rises the tire pressure rises with it a good rule of thumb is for every one degree celsius of tire temperature the pressure will change approximately 0.1 psi as an example if you've got a front left tire that had a cold pressure of 20 psi when the ambient temperature was 10 degrees celsius if you come back next time to the track and you want to achieve the same hot pressure that you had with that reference set if the ambient temperature is now 12 degrees you would set the hot pressure to 20.2 degrees rather than 20 degrees this is just a rule of thumb but it will get you pretty close you can apply this rule of thumb to all of your cold pressures when it comes to getting the most out of your reference cold pressures record keeping becomes really important. I would strongly encourage everyone to keep organized notes of all of their tire pressures when they go to the track. That means recording the cold pressures and the temperature that the tires were when you set those cold pressures, the hot pressures when the car was on track, as well as any bleeds or boosts that are done when the car is in the pit lane. And then once you've done those bleeds and boosts and you let the tire settle at the end of the day, recording the reference pressure and the temperature when you take the reference pressure. If you can keep well organized good quality notes on your cold and your hot pressures for each track that you go to with your car, you will find this speeds up your process a lot when you want to hit your target tire pressure each time you go back to that same circuit. In motorsport, it's quite common for people to use nitrogen in their tires rather than the ambient air. There are a couple of reasons for this. One reason is the pressure of nitrogen tends to change a little bit less with temperature so it makes it a little bit easier to set the pressures. Another one is humidity. When you have compressed nitrogen in a bottle, it is dried and has almost zero humidity. One of the problems with using ambient air is that if it isn't dry, or if it hasn't been through a dryer when it's been compressed, it can have a lot of humidity in it. The problem with humidity is that it can give you quite unstable pressure growth in response to temperature. For a tire that has air with a high humidity in it relative to a tire that has low or zero humidity inside it, the tire with high humidity will have a higher pressure increase for a given temperature increase as opposed to the tire with the dry air. This really becomes a problem if you've got different levels of humidity inside each tire inside your tire set or different tire sets. That makes it much more difficult to get accurate hot pressures based on your cold pressures when the car's on track. Using compressed nitrogen gets around this problem because generally when it's supplied to you in the bottle, it's at a very low or zero humidity. This allows you to ignore all the effects of humidity. One of the things you need to take care of when getting tires fitted is there's not any excessive humidity already inside the tires. Often this can be from condensation on the inside surface of the rim or the inside surface of the tire. It's really important to get rid of all that before the tires get fitted. Otherwise, you're automatically giving yourself a hard time to get accurate hot pressures because if that humidity isn't equal amongst each, each one of your tires, 
you're going to get much more pressure increase for a given temperature increase when you run that tyre on track. Tyre pressure is a really complex subject. In professional racing, you typically have at least one person per car just looking after nothing but the tyres. And the reason is that because it is a really involved job. However, hopefully I've given you guys a couple of insights into how to get your hot pressures right when you're running on track. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.